And so we're live now, guys. Hi, everyone. So before we start, we would like to hear a few shout outs from maybe Facebook, maybe also in what you call this, in YouTube. Before we start. Okay. See. Do you have any shout outs, friends? YouTube. Before we start. Okay. Okay. Do you have any shout outs, friends? YouTube. Um hi guys. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hello. Nice. Oh, okay. <laughs> apparently, nag... Oh, so, um, apparently, nag-log a bit. So, I guess we just have to start right now. Okay lang ba? Okay, nice. Um, ilan na ba kayo dyan? Okay. So, uh, we're, we're gonna go back na lang kay Harvey later. So, Okay. Okay, just uh, a little bit of recap lang from uh, yung last time natin. Um, gum gumawa tayo ng by buying classifier um, uh, with like hundreds and like I guess thousands of images. Um, and then so y essentially yung yung classifier na yun, um, gumukuha ng input na image and then nag para nag spit out ng characters yung corresponding na meaning or like ya yeah, ng ng character na yon so for that gumamit tayo ng like very basic na neural network yung ano lang yung multi level multi level na perceptron so even so with that nakakuha pa rin tayo ng 94% accuracy di ba so um ito yung magandang thing about machine learning kasi um, they give us like the power to make um, really useful stuff, accurate stuff. So, um, pero, may malaking pero, um, uh, usually in the real world, um, yung data natin hindi structured. Like, wala silang uh, labels, uh, usually ganun, or wala talagang structure at all. So, uh, so, yeah, parang it, it's a luxury na kung, kung meron kung na yung mga labels, uh, yung pagkakaroon ng labels. And yung another thing is, like, what if gusto lang natin talaga na maghanap ng pattern sa data natin? Like, we were just given images and then well lang, we, we just want to find ano yung mga similar na images ano yung mga images na like like example kung na view to ng user yung image na to ano yung likely na i-view niya next ganun like ano yung mararecommend natin uh, sa kanya like yung mga ganung stuff so uh, yeah so dito na papasok yung unsupervised learning kasi hindi lahat ng problems kaya ma by supervised learning. Oh. So, oh. so um, okay, so again, I am Franz Sisista. Ako yung uh, CTO ng GSC Loyola. So, alright. Okay, since ano to, um, expository lecture lang to, like introduction lecture, um, I'm gonna like sweep a lot of details under the rug. Like, uh, I'm I'm sorry na lang in, in advance. I mean, hindi naman sorry. Kasi maraming, maraming math stuff na I think is parang I don't want you na ma-intimidate kayo nun. So, uh, 
i-hide ko na lang yung mga math stuff. Pero don't worry, don't worry. Um, di nyo kailangan ng, like, ng programming background for this or even math background. Um, yung goal ko lang talaga dito is maintindihan nyo kung ano yung core ideas behind unsupervised learning, ano yung... Um, Uh, okay, so, so yeah, yun yun. Okay, so yeah, um, pero yun nga, um, may math background ako, so uh, don't hesitate to comment kung, kung may mga questions kayo or like may mga clarifications. Uh, we'll, we'll address it, alright? Okay, so yeah, yeah, let's so continue. Uh, wait, before Fran start, you can ask any question that you like. Um, you, you can just comment it below in, you, in YouTube Live and maybe in Facebook Live, and we'll entertain your questions. Robin and I will help Fran in letting your question be answered. So, and with uh, further ado, here comes Fran again. All right. So, yeah. So, supervised, uh, so unsupervised learning, I mean, um, May dalawang branches. Uh, yung isa is dimensionality reduction, ito. And yung another ay yung clustering. So they're pretty related and usually I do dimensionality reduction lang muna before doing clustering. So yeah, unahin na muna natin yun, yung dimensionality reduction. Okay. So ngayon, di ba yung topic... Uh... Sorry? What do we mean by yung dimensions? Ano talaga yung binabawasan natin? Uh, roughly speaking, it's like the number of features or like the number of stuff, like information you need to describe our data points. Uh, it's kind of, uh, I'm sorry na medyo vague siya na description, pero it's better kung may example. Um, example ito. Um, how much information ba yung kailangan natin to describe yung mga, yung mga ganitong images? Um, and given yung dalawang images, uh, how much information rin ba yung kailangan natin para, para masabi natin na, oh, yung dalawang images na to are different. Ganon. So like, yeah. Kailangan natin like ng one-to-one -one na, na ano, na correspondence between yung images and then yung set of fe features na yun. So, uh, yung computers, of course, because they're stupid, <laughs> uh, yung ginagawa nila is, di ba, like, if, if they want to check if yung dalawang images are similar, yung ginagawa nila is, they check all pixels, like, one by one, lahat ng lahat ng 40 by 60 iko compare nila yan so um so in this case we can see na yung 40 by 60 na na pixel image natin we can see na it's a 2400 dimensional point like each image is like a 2400 dimensional point because may 2400 pixels siya Diba kasi, like, in this case kasi, ginagamit natin lahat ng pixels. Um, yan yung case ng computers. Pero, yung humans kasi doesn't do that. Do, don't do that. Like, iba yung ginagawa natin eh. Diba kung may, may mga images, like, gumagamit tayo ng abstraction, like, yung pinaka-direct, pinaka-simple would be, uh, we can differentiate two images. Um, based kung sino yung person. Oh. Pero, possible rin na yung case na, okay, same yung person, pero sa isang image, nakatingin siya sa left, yung isa, nakatingin siya sa right. So, di ba, yung dalawang pictures na yun ay different. So, kailangan natin ng another information. Yung direction ng gaze. Di ba? So, pero, 
marami pang stuff na information di ba na, na kailangan natin uh, such as brightness it's possible na yung same person is looking at the same direction pero magkaiba yung lighting so magkaiba pa rin yung pictures di ba and yung facial expression kung happy ba siya or sad so ngayon so ito yung ginagawa ng humans di ba para we have these like abstracted concepts some some somewhat uh ito yung ginagamit natin to like determine kung magkaiba ba or similar yung pictures such that ganun um so in this case kaya natin makompress yung 2400 dimensional na image into four dimensional points like ito lang it, uh, ito yung kailang i mean i mean we could use more like let's say uh yung probably kung gano uh yung background images ganun. like we could we could use more features pero these are enough uh to describe yung mga these images yeah so ayan okay um so na-establish na natin na may correspondence between yung images natin and like points like points in some higher dimensional stuff pero um kung points sila asan sila like points sila where um well we could think na they are points um we could think that they are points in a higher dimensional manifold um yung manifold so sorry for the term pero yung manifold think of it as a shape like a sphere is a manifold this is a manifold um na pa like yung box is a manifold like um isipin niyo lang na andon kayo sa surface di ba and then let's see um <clears throat> Let's say um we start here sa image ni ano sa image ni ni Arnold if we if we change some parameters essentially example yung facial expression niya if we change natin to a bit this is the same as moving sa di ba sa fourth dimension di ba changing the brightness is the same as moving sa third dimension di ba like sa sa z direction moving the direction like changing the direction of gaze is the same as like um moving sa y direction and same here sa x direction diba like na um kung may tanong kayo just just ask pero yeah we could we could think of essentially we could compress we could arrange these images into points like pwede natin sila i-arrange into points such that Kung magkalapit sila dito, it means na magkalapit red yung images nila. Kung, kung magkalayo yung yung images, di ba dito medyo is kind of sad, dito happy siya. Kung magkalayo, medyo yung points dito sa panifold, then dissimilar yung images or something like that, you know. So, so yun, parang in a way, think of the these structure as like yung arrangement nila. Um, and the goal natin is to visualize this. Um, in this case, di ba, like, ito siya is like a two-dimensional case, so easy lang. Pero, remember na may four dimensions tayo, like may four features tayo. So, and hindi natin kayo mag-visualize ng four-dimensional na manifolds. Like, um, yung kaya lang talaga natin ay yung three dimensional three dimensional na stuff like boxes um spheres uh donuts yun lang yung kaya natin ma-imagine like yung fourth dimension uh gg let's just give up <laughs> well well no um so yung goal natin is to visualize like this yung four dimensional na manifold na to yung arrangement uh pero instead of that of doing that why don't we like reduce na lang from four dimensions to like let's say three or two oh like diba so we could do this actually uh yung good news is that merong algorithms that 
can reduce yung dimensions ng data natin automatically ah, um, from higher dimensions to higher dimensions ito to lower dimensional ones na kaya natin ma-visualize so yan yeah. um later um i'll describe uh, mag-walk through ako kung paano ko to nagawa so um try ko rin explain yung code um your you guys will be coding tonight pero don't worry kung wala kayong coding experience you're gonna be fine um so yeah so ka kaya yan ng machine learning nowadays uh yung bad news lang is that sometimes um <clears throat> Yung bad news lang is that sometimes like yung mga nagje-generate nilang ito yung output yung visualizations are kind of hard to uh, understand sometimes pero in this case um we're kind of lucky kasi kung titignan niyo di ba um from left to right ano yung nag-iiba napansin niyo ba it's yung brightness di ba as we go from from left to right, nagiging darker siya. This is the same as, essentially, di ba dito? Essentially, we're moving sa Z direction, in, in, in a way. <laughs> oh. And then, oh. and then, from ano naman, from, from bottom to top, napapansin niyo ba, yung gaze niya mula sa left, papuntang right. Diba? Napansin nyo ba? So, ito. Ito na yung output ng AI natin. This. Aha. Uh -huh. So, uh, yeah. Kaya to. So, diba? Like, from 2,400 dimensions to um, from 2,400 dimensions to four dimensions to two dimensions so um essentially ito yung dimensionality reduction we're essentially just like removing unnecessary like information in a way like nag essentially nag extract lang tayo yung mga features that are important para ma visualize natin yung data example ito yung faces di ba isn't it cool yeah so um Pag-isipan nyo, ano yung mga stuff na kaya nyo ma-create dito? Uh, kaya nyo malagay? Um, maybe uh, yung bye-bye rin, pwede nyo i-arrange dito. Or like, maybe yung connections nyo sa uh, sa Facebook or something. It, kayo bahala. Oo. So, um, yeah. Ito, automatically na, na to nahanap ng, ano, ha, ng, ng AI. Okay. So, um, how do they work? Okay, um, may mga questions ba kayo dyan? Okay, uh, I'm, I'm gonna wait a bit kung may mga questions. Okay, um, Okay, so, uh, let, let's move on na lang muna. Okay, so how do they work? Uh, again, um, I'm gonna like sweep like a lot of details or let's under the rug. Pero, uh, pero yeah, I hope you could follow. So, um, di ba, yung, yung one technique would be yung principal component analysis. So, di ba, imagine na ito yung original data nyo, ito. Like, di ba makalat siya, like, yung data natin ito, ito. What we can do is, essentially, di ba ito siya two-dimensional, like, may, may X dito, and then may Y. Pero when you think about it, like, kaya naman natin to compress into like a one-dimensional data eh. So yung gagawin lang, yung ginagawa ng P PCA essentially is, like, i-orient siya sa bagong axis, ito, essentially, rotate and then squish. Pak. Pag squish sa kanya, one dimensional na siya. So, like, from two dimensions, eh, diba ito, like, ito, ito yung x, diba? Ito yung x. Um, ito yung y. 
Then after rotation, like after rotation, and then after squishing, nagiging one-dimensional na lang siya. So ito yung, ito yung PCA. Ito yung ginagawa ng PCA. Oh. And then, yung, may another algorithm, which is isomap. Oh. Yung ginagawa ng isomap is, essentially, it allows us to like twist or untangle yung mga manifolds. Example ito. Kung ito yung ito yung mga data points natin dati, like let's say the, these points correspond to like images, then magkalapit sila kung magkalapit yung images, ganun. Um, pwede natin to i-untangle into this. So, kung mapapansin nyo, ito siya, this is three-dimensional, di ba? Like, three dimensions, pero ito, two dimensions lang, di ba? Oh. So, essentially, yan yung dimensionality reduction. It allows us to like visualize higher dimensional data. Oh. Like, para, para, para ma-inspect natin personally what's going on. Oh. So, uh, okay, we can jump na actually to the code. So, um, I hope nakapag-follow pa kayo. Alright? Uh, so, what what I want you to do is um, punta kayo sa colab that research uh, research that google dot com. Uh -huh. So colab that research that google dot com. So punta kayo don and okay. Kung andun na kayo, um, op open kayo ng bagong notebook. New notebook. Yay! Okay. So, this is what we're gonna do. So, um, first, explore lang muna tayo a bit. So, ito siya. Sa mga marunong na mag-Python, this is just an ID. IDLE or like an IDE for for Python like bot online so hosted by Google so wait lang we're connecting okay so uh, demo na to ng ano ha ng dimensionality reduction okay a print uh, hello world there okay connected na tayo okay so um Dimensionality reduction. Okay. Title na tayo. And then, first, mag-import tayo ng uh, libraries. Yung mga kailangan natin libraries. Uh, import numpy as MP. Import matplotlib that uh, pyplot as PLT. So, um, yung mga, yung, yung mga ito, these are used for like data manipulation and like pag display ng data so uh, from matplotlib import offset box yeah yung mga kailangan lang natin basically um next so for this case um i-download lang natin yung like faces dataset aha uh -huh. so the data set load okay i load lang muna natin from um from ST learn ito yung ito yung source ng data set data sets import fetch lfw uh, underscore people and then data set equal to uh, fetch. Fetch na natin. And then um, main faces uh, per person 30. So essentially um, kurin lang natin yung mga like images na that, that appears like at least 30 times para ano. 
And then, gawin natin yung images. Okay? Um, let's wait a bit kasi di na-download pa. So, kung may tanong kayo, just, just, ano, don't, don't hesitate. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's done now. So, uh, yung next na <clears throat> yung next natin na gagawin is um to check if na load natin yung ano yung data set. So first thing, data set shape. So um dapat same yung ano natin na yung output. Oh, ito. Um yung meaning nito is that meron tayong essentially 2370 na like faces and like yung faces natin uh ay 62 by 47. Okay, uh we can visualize like uh, we can we can output one of them like plt dot i am show data set zero then cmap is equal to gray para black and white there okay so um make sure na na load nyo na okay and then yeah make sure na we have the same output these should be the same. And then, ano lang, for sanity check, let, let me just do this. Um, the output ko lang, I, you, don't, you don't need to, to do this. Uh, yung gagawin ko lang is, Essentially, ano lang, um, like output a bunch of a bunch of data sets or like the <laughs> of images to see kung na na load nya properly and enumerate. Okay, let's a bit. We don't have to do this, huh? There, okay. But if you did it anyway, um, expect to like have a uh, this output. So it oh, that's Gloria. What the f? <laughs> anyway, yeah, 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 yeah. It's the data set nothing of images, and we want to uh reduce yung ano nila, um, yung dimensions in a way. So you. Actually, very, very simple lang to. Like, what you do here is Wait. For PCA, principal control analysis. Okay. For PCA, Yung, yung gagawin lang natin is two lines of code lang to from SA learn dot decomposition import okay import PCA okay and then PCA is equal to n components 2 yeah okay so essentially yung ginagawa natin dito is um we're gonna, yung gagawin niyang, yung output ng PCA ay two-dimensional na vector. Yeah. And from here, 
Pinatin siya i-plot like um production PCA dot fit transform. Okay, ito transform na natin yung data set. Okay. And so oh. that we shape sixty two by forty seven. Okay. There. So, yung ginagawa dito is, di ba may PCA tayo? Um, essentially, ito transform na niya yung data from, di ba yung na-discuss natin na like high dimensional na ito, like 2,400 pixels to this, essentially. So, yeah, okay. Let's, um, the exit scatter um budge sorry the LP that scatter there okay um yeah, medyo, medyo makalat siya, <laughs> as you can see. Um, pero yeah, pero yeah, ano to, yung mga, yung, kung may, may dalawang faces dito na magkalapit, ibig sabihin, um, similar, similar yung ano nila, parang similar yung images, yeah. Kung yung points dito magkalapit, then yung corresponding images are similar lang, lang rin. So, um, kung napapansin nyo, uh, medyo medyo basura pa yung output. So, uh, i-beautify natin. Alright. Def plot components data set model Okay, so gawa tayo ng function that like, essentially just like outputs yung ano, um, like a, a clear version of of this, like whatever this is. <laughs> oh, para mas makita natin yung faces. Okay, so plt that figure, uh, fig size. So essentially yung fig size means kung gaano kalaki yung ano natin yung image. Then... Kunin natin yung ano, yung access kung saan natin siya i, uh, i-output yung result natin. Aha. Uh -huh. And contract. Okay. Max uh, access to zero. Okay, so yung ginagawa lang dito is essentially oh. Uh, Ito yung, ito yung parang limit, like minimum distance natin. Kasi kung i-output natin lahat yung mga, yung mga images dito, like di ba mag, mag crowd up sila. So yung dito, essentially, i-output lang natin yung mga images na that aren't too close. Para maging, para hindi sila maging makalat. So, okay, alright. Check the plot. Raj. Okay. So ito yung ito yung mga napakita natin na images. So initially um two times project that max. Aha. Uh -huh. Thank you. 
Okay. Um, so, okay. Iterate tayo for um, for the images in numerate data set. So, for each image, calculate natin yung distance. Uh -huh. Which is np.sum. Uh, ito yung projection niya i, yung point natin. Uh, so, ito yung, yung best would be um, distances to all shown images. Um, so, yeah. Okay, and then show this image. So, um, in this case, kung ano, kung yung image na to, di ba, like for each image, kung yung image na to, uh, medyo malayo sa mga na napakita na, then let's, let's show this to you. Okay. And then... Ito niyo yung pag-output natin ng images. And let's add I think it's ready. Uh -huh. So ngayon, um, instead of doing this na medyo makalat, ito siya, uh, okay, we could, uh, we could, we could output this na. Okay, uh, we could use this na. So, okay. Plot components and then data set dot reshape negative 1 62 by 47 then gamitin natin yung PCA uh -huh. and oh a joke prof <laughs> this should be Oh, yeah. Sorry. Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, Okay, um, it long, there seems to be a problem na hindi, hindi ko na-encounter uh, before. Okay, uh, let, let's, uh, <laughs> please have patience. <laughs> mean this. Yeah, so if ever, guys, um, you have any questions, well, um, friends, decoding, you can please free, free ask those questions. Thank you. 
Yeah, we would like to thank all the viewers, both in Facebook and in YouTube. Yeah, so that's why it's so fun about me. Hey, Ray, it works now. Okay. So, Franz, where did where did the mistake come from? Um, nagkamale ako dito some some around here. Essentially, yung pag it this the ito siya is just a pretty version of this. Pero napapansin yun ba? Like, okay, this is the same output output as before. Yung ito. Uh, so as you move from left to right nagiging darker yung faces ng people and as you move from bottom to top niche change yung gaze ng person uh, so yeah um ito na yung PCA essentially yan yung ginagawa niya so from from 62 by times 47 dimensions nagiging two dimensional na lang so like yung x and then yung y all right so uh, yung Yung another trick naman is yung isomap. Uh -huh. Yung another trick is yung isomap. And ito siya is actually not that hard. Kailangan mo lang ulit ng, ng, ano, ng, ng dalawang lines of code. sklearn.manifold import um, isomap. And then, initialize natin yung model, isomap, and com components. Uh -huh. So, dito, let's stay learn. <laughs> Be careful ha, baka magkakamali kayo sa typo. Okay, there. So, scalearn.manifold, uh, import isomap, and then, um, prepare nyo na yung, ano, yung, uh yung yung instance ng model and then from there we could just actually we could just copy paste this ito siya and then replace P pca with isomap wait lang aha uh -huh. it's processing 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 so essentially yung ginagawa nito is di ba meron kang shape like high dimensional high dimensional shape na ganito instead of just squishing di ba like instead of just rotations and squishing ito siya nakakapag ano rin siya nakapag straighten out ng mga like curves nakapag um nag smoothen out ng stuff yeah it it yung ginagawa ng isomap essentially so, there, yay! Ito na yung output ng isomap. Tapansin niyo ba? It's not, hindi naman diff, that different from before. And pero ngayon kung napdebat dito, yung 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 y na component is not hindi masyado clear. Parang may indication na from right, from left to right pa rin yung yung ano yung yung gaze. Pero dito more pronounced na. Dito talaga, tiyan nyo, yung gaze niya, the left. Left, 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 left. Pero ito siya dito, pataas. Right, 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 right. Diba? Oh. And dito, from white, this white girl, papuntang this guy, this black guy. Oh. So, um, yeah. Essentially, yan yung, ano, yan yung, this is how to use dimensionality reduction. Kung mapapansin nyo, it's not really that hard. In a way, parang, what you have to do is just like, um, import the library, and then create an instance of that, and then just just run it. Like, ipapasok mo lang, mag-output siya ng ganitong stuff. Yeah. This is what, what I like about, um, yung dimensionality reduction kasi you could visualize a lot of very complicated stuff uh, very easily automatically so yeah um essentially yeah yun na yung ano yun na yung dimensionality reduction 
basically. So, um, kung may mga questions kayo, okay, let's pause for a bit. And then, uh, kung may mga questions kayo, go lang. I'm gonna wait here. Yeah, so, as Franz would say, you like to encourage you to ask questions, um, especially if you want to go back to the introduction again, um, the setup of why Franz is doing this, how did he go about in the structure of code? You would like to entertain those questions. Yeah, um, okay, don't worry. <laughs> okay, so um, we could, you know, we could start from the top, Olet. So, um, first we input yung numpy matpatlib, essentially yung mga libraries. Then download the data set and then check if the data is uh, like loaded properly. And, then, and yun yeah, just do the no, dimensional reductions. No? And yeah, you're here now. Yay. Uh, yun, yung, yun lang yung dimensionality reduction. Uh -huh. So, okay. Ngayon. For the second part, ito yung easier part actually. This is, I would say that not complex. Hmm? Uh, so, um, yung clustering. For example, ito. Uh, how many do you think yung mga clusters ng data na to? Diba? Like, you could see na may isang cluster lang, like this whole thing. Some would say three, like one, two, three. Pero, so ngayon, um, introduce ko kayo sa k-means. Uh, so yung k-means essentially is, um, suppose may guess na kayo, like how, how high, how big k is. Essentially, what k-means do is like cluster up, uh, what k means though is like cluster these up. So, okay, basic rundown ng, ng algorithm is initially you set like you pick a k, like pick, pick a k na you feel is correct. In this case, we feel na k is equal to 3. And then pick random points uh, there, pick random points. Ito. Uh, pick random points as yung centroid uh, and then for each point na to ilagay mo siya sa centroid ng, ng ano, ng pin, na pinakamalapit sa kanya. So example, ito yung pinakamalapit ay ito, yung ito yung pinakamalapit ay yun, ito pinakamalapit ito, ganun. So, ito yung ginagawa niya and then once makalculate nyo na yung clustering, Example ito, yung cluster na ito, yung white, di ba, yung, yung white cluster dito, lahat sila ay connected to this centroid. And de, these, ito yung yellow ay connected to this. And ito yung, yung pink naman ay connected to this. So yung gagawin mo naman is, uh, di ba, kunin, uh, kunin mo yung clustering and then i-move mo yung mga centroids mo to the like center to the center of your groups example yung red, red yung red group ito yung red group asan yung center niya di ba yung center niya is somewhere here so yung ito siya ay mamo-move papunta dito yung ito naman yung center nito ay dito ito yung center ay ito so, um, if we try it out, hmm, there. Essentially, yun yung ginagawa. Like, um, start from random, group them up, and then move, then group up na ulit. Dito, di ba dito, ito, di ba example, ito yung, yung white, ito lang siya kanina. Ngayon, since na-transfer na yung, yung red na centroid doon, itong silang lahat ay part na ni, nito. And, Ito naman, yung part niya ay ito. And then ito, yung part niya ay ito. So, 
ngayon kung napapansin nyo, ito siya is odd. Kasi yung center ng group niya is somewhere here. So, mamumove siya doon. There. Diba? Then again, then again, then again, then again. Diba? Napansin nyo ba? Like, uh, start from random. Uh -huh. Start from random centroids. Like, yeah, random kind of grouping. And then, transfer to the centroid. Transfer to the centroid. Then again, again, and again, and again. Yeah. And then at some point, guaranteed na mag-stop na lang to. Oh, it, it's always guaranteed that this will stop. So yeah, um, basically yan yung key. Di ba napansin nyo ba? Di ba? Eh, hindi ba magical na ngayon, tignan nyo dito, yung side na to ay parang cluster na ni red. Yung ito ay cluster na ni yellow. And ito ay cluster na ni, uh, ni blue. So ito, di ba? Nag nagsim nagsimula tayo dito. Wala lang muna into classifying stuff. And it looks neat, to be honest. And yeah. From here, we could we could go di this na ulit. So, ito yung ano natin. So, go to colab.research.google.com ulit. And then, new notebook. Aha. Uh -huh. So, uh, once andun ka na, um, import ulit numpy uh, splt Oh, NP. Import matplotlib pyplot uh, spell And yeah. Right now, we're ready. Right. Initializing muna. And then, yeah, okay. And then, um, yung first natin na gagawin is generate the data. Uh -huh. um, so um if if you're wondering kung bakit kung paano ko nagawa yung Mickey Mouse nothing na to so uh, this is how you do it so uh example dito um maglagay tayo ng ano ng um uh, ng like Gaussian like ma na maglagay tayo ng random points sa around the center zero zero and then yung covariance is twenty five uh, yung covariance remember is uh, yung square ng standard deviation so ito siya is fifteen fifteen so ito siya Yung mean one ay ito. And then, yung second one would be this. So, ito lang muna natin generate din ito. So, go to 9009. Okay. And from there, Generate natin yung data. Run, np that random. Multivariable normal. Mean 1. Cov 1. 100. Alright. 100 it means na may, may 100 points. Sa essentially yung noise natin. O sa, sa data set natin. And then. Data to. Three. Generate natin sa lang lahat. Huh? And then return a concatenation of them. Concatenation. Concatenate. Data 1, data 2, data 3.
There. Okay. So, ngayon na... na Um, so ngayon na generate na natin yung data. Uh -huh. So Okay. Oops, nakalimutan ko yung main thing. So, uh, ito siya ay nasa um, negative 15, 15, 99. Alright. There. So, na-generate natin yung data. And then, yung next would be yung k-means. Uh -huh. So, uh, so, before that, Calculate lang, uh, gawa tayo ng function that calculates yung Euclidean distance between like a point and yung centroids. So, um, yung Euclidean algorithm, uh, Euclidean, ito yung Euclidean distance, um, return np that sum, square root, MP that sum centroids PT there. Huh? So ito yung, ito yung Euclidean distance which is pretty much just ano, ito siya. Oh, yung distance between a point and a centroid is, yeah. Yung centroid minus point squared plus something plus squared, ganun. Ito yung Euclidean distance. And, okay. So, clustering. So, uh, dito na tayo nag, ano, um, nag, like, essentially nag regroup Diba, ito yung process of like um, kung saan mag magkakorespond yung mga points. Dito ba sa red, sa yellow, or sa white, or something. So yeah, yung ginagawa niya is um, initially clusters. Aha. Uh -huh. Clusters of land data. Initially, um, all data points are not clustered. So, yeah. Okay, now. Okay. So, yung pag this time, kunin natin yung ano, yung closest na centroid, like get closest centroid from point. Okay. And then kunin natin essentially, di ba like may may mga distances na tayo to all other centroids. Yung gagawin natin is um, kunin natin yung centroid na uh, may pin na pinaka malapit or essentially may pinaka maliit na distance uh, from that point. So, call distances point and centroids. Clusters. There. So, um, yeah. And then yung pag-update is Mm 
-hmm. And then, um, so in this case, in, in this step, actually, what we natin is, ah, okay, we, we, we forgot something important previously, clusters I is equal to C. Basically, um, assign um, cluster to a point or end point to cluster. Yeah. Uh -huh. So we, I'm sorry, we, we forgot about that. Uh, so dito, initially, wala lang munang bagong centroid. And then, um, Yeah. So cluster. So essentially, kunin natin yung kunin natin yung centroids, and then kunin natin yung um yung mean nila, yung or yung average, like um. Average ng cluster, example, cluster 1, cluster 2. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Kunin natin yung mean ng cluster axis 0. Oops, we forgot. Uh, NP array new centroids. Uh, so, ito yung, ito yung pag update. Like, kurin lang muna yung clusters. Essentially, like, get all clusters. Get clusters. And then, for each centroid, um, essentially, parang, kurin natin parang, uh, I kunin natin yung, av yung average or mean ng mga values na parang yun yung pinakamalapit na cluster or like nasa dry I mean. So, ito yung ginagawa niyan dito. Uh -huh. And yeah. So, from here, actually, we can ano na, um, plot data. Uh, First, okay, ano yung ano, plt.scatter? So, initially, um, this is how the, um, the data set looks like. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Um, for this, it's better kung gumawa tayo ng similar function as before. So, um, essentially, this is just for plotting, like, data. Um, data, centroids, um, by default, they're none. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, kunin lang muna, muna yung centroids and yeah. Then, ito na yung code for outputting the stuff. Big size. 69. So, um, just, um, I, I hope, I hope, um, kung hindi kayo nakaka-follow, just tell me. Pero don't worry kasi isi-share ko naman yung code na to, uh, later. 
Uh -huh. Then thank you, let's scatter. Yeah. So for everyone's information, what we're gonna do after we finish this simple workshop in introducing uh, unsupervised learning, we'll share the document or the Google Colab in the Facebook group, which you follow, uh, which is facebook.com slash Leola. And there we will provide you with the, with the slides as well as the, what do you call this? The Google Colab code that um, Franz set, it, set up. So feel free to ask questions. Um, if you have, um, we'll be happy to accommodate it. Thank you. Okay, plot data. So, okay, na ano na natin sa plot data, um, data set. Then, ito yung initial na state ng data set. Yeah. Okay, so, go back. So, anong ginagawa dito? Um, yeah, essentially, just parang print the scatter plot of, like, yung data, arin yung centroids kung specified. So, um, Okay, for this case, um, simulate na natin yung ginawa natin earlier. So, K, C3, then centroids. And P random, not run. Okay, and then... Centroids. So, ito, essentially, generate K centroids. Ito yung code for, di ba, example, kung napili nyo na yung proper na K, proper na K, what you do next is um, generate K na, ano, K na centroids. And then, uh, let's plot. Like, uh, plot data it's ox ikulang centroids Ah, okay. Um, wait lang a bit. Clusters is not defined. Ah, sorry, my typo. So yeah, so do cluster, so do clustering. Uh -huh. So initially, ito yung ito yung data set natin, di ba? Ito yung data set natin initially, and then um we could pick a k. Isa ba? We could pick a k, and then generate k centroids. 
And then if i-plot natin, magiging ito na siya. So, di ba, random lang to, random placement. I, I, do, I don't know kung paano sila napunta doon, random lang yan. And then, what we do now is, um, Duki means update, which is essentially centroids. Duki means update, data set, centroids. Diba, um, diba as explained kanina, diba ito yung mga, ito yung mga ano nila, ito yung mga essentially clusters, diba? Example ito, um, yung cluster of this guy is itong green, yung whole green na to. Um, yung mean, yung mean nila ito. So possible, it's possible na ito siya ay mamomove to the right somehow. Ito naman, kasi ang layo-layo niya, example, di ba ito, ito sila. Andyan. So, ito sila, since ang layo, uh, ang layo-layo niya, so, ito siya, mamumove siya dito, and ito siya, mamumove siya doon. Essentially, yung, again, I'm sorry, inuulit-ulit ko, pero I just want to hammer it down, na yung ginagawa mo sa key means, key means is like, ilagay mo lang randomly, anywhere, yung mga centers mo, and then i-assign mo yung clustering based on yung pinakamalapit na na center center or centroid and then once ma-assign mo na yung mga ano yung mga clustering example ito ito sila na cluster na to and dito sila ganun I, you move uh, i-move mo yung centroid to like somewhere in the centroid ren ng original mo na graph um, okay. Plot data, data set, centroids. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh -huh. So, okay, means update ito. And, oh my god, sorry. There. And, yeah, there. Diba? So, from here, diba, ito siya, na-move siya dito, somewhere in the middle, ng yellow. So, yeah, yan yan siya. And ito naman yung yung for violet na move siya in the middle para sa violet. There, okay? Medyo na-adjust na yung ano natin. Let's do it again. There, okay. Again. Okay, that's better. Again. Actually, ito rin yung ginagawa mo. Um like, i-connect mo sila sa pinakamalapit na centroid. Tapos, i-move mo yung centroid sa mean nila. That's why key means. Kasi, ilalagay mo yung centroid sa mean. There. Again. Diba? There. It's so much better na, diba? Uh, Nag-i-improve siya over time. There. Look at that. Uh, by this time, hindi na siya nag-move much yung ano, yung um, yung clustering. So, we could stop here na. And then say na, ito yung clustering mo. Ito yung cluster for uh, teals. Ito yung cluster for violets. Ito yung cluster for yellows. Yeah. So, um, yeah. That's basically, yan na yung key means. Uh, so, uh, going back. Uh, Yan yung key means. Um, 
maraming applications ng k-means like maybe yun nga oh maybe gusto mo lang i, i ano kung asan kung pan, like you just want to like group together things yung data mo na unstructured like if you're flooded with the da with data you can do this lang muna and then yeah and then find like end up with clusters diba? and then going back tingnan yun ito yung original diba original data set Ah, uh, wait, sorry. Uh, ito, yung, ito yung original data set. Um, ito, sorry about ito yung original data set. And then, ito yung random placement ng mga centroid. Then, calculate na kaagad kung ano yung mga pinakamalapit sa kanila. Ito. Ito. And then, transfer. Transfer, transfer doon. Sa, sa middle, transfer, di ba? Then transfer, transfer, transfer. Uh, in my progression. <laughs> then move. Transfer. Transfer sa mean. Transfer sa mean. Transfer sa mean. Uh, so yan na yan siya. Naka-cluster up muna sila together. Uh, diba? So yeah. Um, so basically, actually... Yan lang yung ano, yan lang yung unsupervised learning. Mar maraming kay maraming applications nito. Kayo lang yung Ayo, what what do you think yung pwede niyo magawa? Oh. Ikaw uh Harvey, um what do you think yeah. yung pwede natin ma ma, ma create? with i know with with these technologies well for me as if i were to look at what's happening a while ago the matching between uh -huh. this these guys and girls so mostly for me kahit mo pwede sa image eh image pa lang pwede hmm. na agad natin mag match actually feeling ko I'm, I'm not really sure but you know um facial recognition maybe some of us can apply this unsupervised learning and if ever um may mga instances kasi na you know it's hard to to connect kasi as we saw what france did was image lang for me if we look at further we can apply this to videos as well maybe to music as well you know for matching music um and then also maybe for languages you know how we chat the chatbots there are really lots of application with this because there's some things that you can't really categorize per se, diba? So hmm. you need unsupervised learning to really help you um, cluster this together in a way and teach the machine to learn. Because as, as we would say that uh, machines don't really know at first what's black, what's blue, or what's this type, what's this type. It's really the complexity of our brain that can do that. So hmm. it really has lots of application even in the business field. Siguro for the students setting, what I can say, siguro mga um, clustering those complaints for a help desk can really help um, through machine learning. And how about for you? What do you think can this, or do you have other projects in mind or projects that you did before using unsupervised learning? Unsupervised learning? Um, oh yeah, actually fun fact. Very, very interesting to. Um, May mga researchers na nakapag-discover na, di ba, di ba yung gene sequence ng mga humans? Um, di ba yung gene sequence like GACTC something, GACT? Tapos yung ginawa nila is, gumamit sila ng principal component analysis. Ito, di ba? Principal component analysis. Para okay, ma-reduce to two, two dimensions. Uh, uh. And then, tignan, nyo, tignan mo to ito yung mga it, yung mga yung PCA na mga genes nila look like yung map ng Europe. Napapansin mo ba? Yeah, yeah. So what you're saying is based on their oh. genetic um the genetic code we were able to trace and somehow look in a geographical sense 
Hmm. Parang Europe. That's actually interesting. Uh, uh, so that, that's uh, that's one thing na you can do. And actually, ano, di ba yung by buying classification? Pwede rin yeah. ito ma- magawa with K-means. Oh, kasi essentially, ano, um, pwede lang muna natin i-cluster together yung mga, ano, yung mga similar mga letter, mga letter mga, o yung mga curves letter. nila cluster natin together and then with that K-means, we were able to calculate the distance, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so siguro for our audience that maybe doesn't know what those K-means mean, um, yeah, I think you need to really understand statistics more, mathematics in depth because um, we really use this in terms of um, data science and machine learning. Am I correct, Franz? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So, yeah. So, the, does anyone, anyone have questions? I repeat, we'll reshare this in our page, even the, uh, what do you call this, the G slides. Um, as I, I could see, even though this is only the start of our series, we're able to have lots of um, different viewers. Imagine uh, a fluctuate lang minsan, maybe it's due to internet connection, but we're happy to see um, more than 10 a while ago uh, viewers. So thank you very much for um, viewing our simple and humble workshop. And yeah, so do you have any more to add, Franz? Um, yun lang. <laughs> so, yeah. um, see you next time, guys. Okay, so before we end, before we end, I would like to introduce to you what is DSC again. So uh, let me share my screen, bro. No. So, so here is DSC. Um, you can check our website at dscadmo.org. So it's a new website. It's not really released yet in public, but right now I'm releasing it. So who we are? Or who are we, rather? Uh, we are Developer Student Clubs. We're a student organization powered by Google Technologies and Google Developers that aims to build skills, student skills and network by giving them access to different technologies, specifically Google Developer Technologies like Android, Firebase, Angular, Flutter, Google, and many more. Together, we learn in a peer-to-peer learning environment and build solutions for the community. And as you would see, our vision is to really uplift communities to technology. We hope that with this simple uh, workshops, we will be able to empower you in some way or another and really help the communities build machine learning, web development, or any technology that will really uh, further improve their services and many more. So our mission is to empower, enlighten, and nurture students. So um, thank you very much for attending. We have um, two workshops this week hosted by Google on Firebase. You can check facebook.com slash dscloyola and next week we will have also another data science workshop am i, am I correct Franz? is it about finance do you, you want to have a brief overview about it um so next week yung lesson natin is um how to make money with um data science essentially um we're gonna we're gonna i know we're gonna uh predict yung future prices ng stocks and ganun. So, of course, it's not gonna be perfect kasi, you know, um, beginners pa lang tayo. Pero let's try anyway. Yeah, so, so, yeah, so right now, we'll give, yeah, so we'll give you this plan that if in some way or another you're able to analyze, you know, stocks. But, you know, stocks are really fluctuating all the time. Medyo siguro nag-lie down sila because of, you know, PCQ. But in reality, it would be really hard to uh, to to model it. So but yeah, just stick to us, and we hope that you learn uh, something new today about uh, best learning. Um, yeah. So see you next week. Um, thank you very much for attending our simple workshop. And again, I'm Harvey J. Season, your DSCB for Ateneo de Manila University, and here is Franz, our chief technology officer. Bye guys. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> and in three, in two, in one, and broadcast.